Wouldn't you all be happy if a short trip planned for a week had to turn into a month-long trip or Envy the world after departure, but the crew of the Pan AM flight, California Clippers, thought otherwise, the 10 men had no home to go back to, no money and no clothes. So they had to wander around the world for over a month and were forced to complete their first commercial flight around the globe, this is probably the most miserable crew in the world and what they have been through this month. On December 7, 1941, Captain Robert Ford had a problem when he was flying the California Clippers seaplane to Auckland, New Zealand, when he received the news that the Japanese had attacked Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. The news instantly overwhelmed the entire crew, who had planned to take 12 passengers on a flight from San Francisco on December 1, stopping at Pearl Harbor, arriving in Auckland, New Zealand, and then returning to San Francisco the same way, but the Japanese raid on Pearl Harbor had clearly cut off the plane's journey home. Upon arrival in Auckland, Captain Ford received updated instructions from Pan AM headquarters, cancel return route, obliterate nationality markings on fuselage, and please fly as far west as possible to try to reach the Marine Terminal in New York. For this order, the entire crew out of anger, cursing the headquarters standing to speak not waste pain, from New Zealand to fly back west to the United States, is to fly around the world, not to mention that until now, there is no commercial aircraft to complete such a route, fuel, parts. Route map all do not have, the key now the world has been at war, confusion around who is friendly and who is the enemy, at this time the difficulty of circumnavigating the globe is the same as trying to find a way to get them to the moon. Captain Ford did not hesitate and immediately took someone to the library to borrow maps and draw a preliminary draft route. They planned to fly first to Australia and then directly to Africa, but this distance had reached the limit of the plane's range. So instead they flew northwest along the island of Java and then arrived in Africa from India. The advantage of this route was the ability to obtain fuel and supplies from the British and Dutch garrisons. But this area was also the hardest hit by Japanese aggression and the risk of accidentally entering a war zone was extremely high. The unexpected happened again. A few hours later, Pan AM sent another urgent message requesting the California Clippers to fly to New Caledonia first to assist in evacuating Pan AM employees stationed there to Australia. Although the Boeing 314 seaplane they were flying was the largest civilian aircraft at the time. And New Caledonia was not far away, the spare parts and fuel they had planned to load would have to be unloaded, seriously reducing the crew's chances of getting home on their own. However, the captain was decisive and immediately made the decision to unload the equipment and immediately head to New Caledonia due to the shortage of time, the plane's American flag had not been fully wiped clean at this time, and it was this unclean flag that saved their lives at the back. After picking up Pan AM employees in New Caledonia, they arrived at the port of Darwin, Australia, without incident, as soon as they arrived at the port, the crew started looking for fuel, the Boeing 314's engine performance was considered reliable at the time. But it needed to burn gasoline with an octane rating of 100, which is a military product, and no one had a clue whether they could find it. The good thing is that the Darwin Port Authority found this kind of gasoline for them, after barely filling up with ordinary tankers. Early the next morning, as California Clippers took off for Indonesia, the crew all have a feeling that the next is definitely the most exciting part. That afternoon, the Royal Netherlands Navy stationed in Surabaya, Indonesia, spotted an unidentified aircraft approaching the base. And fighter jets immediately took off to intercept, recently under daily attack by Japanese bombers, the Dutch pilots were all very angry. As they approached the California Clippers, they saw no identification markings from a distance and were about to open fire when one of the pilots, fortunately with good eyes, suddenly saw what appeared to be part of the American flag on the fuselage of the aircraft, really good people have good karma, it is because the front of the Ford captain anxious to fly to save Pan AM employees did not have time to wipe clean the fuselage flag, did not expect to save their lives here. Under the guidance of fighters, the California Clippers landed outside the breakwater, the aircraft like a large passenger ship into the inner harbor ashore in a cold sweat. The original landing area laid a large number of mines, one did not touch as too lucky. They were all old-timers, and the Dutch welcomed them warmly, taking all the supplies, including aircraft spare parts, just to make friends, but the Octane 100 gasoline could not be given, and their fighters still had to be used. But the Dutch said there is still 90 gasoline at the gas station, no you also try. The mechanic of the California Clippers was in a bit of a bind, no one had ever filled a Boeing engine with number 90 gasoline. And it was hard to say if there would be any problems at sea, but then again, there was no choice now, so with a ruthless heart and a gritted tooth, he attached the tube and refueled the plane. However, the crew still plans to use the remaining Octane 100 gasoline first, and then add 90 gasoline when there is really not enough. The next morning, California Clippers left Surabaya and flew to Sri Lanka, and they used fuel carefully along the way, switching to 90 only after using 100 gasoline dry, resulting in an immediate popping backfire and violent vibration of the engine, which almost fell out of the cabin. 
The good thing is that the mechanic was high level and manually adjusted the carburetor to the ideal level, which was barely enough to be able to fly. That's how they turned upside down for 19 hours, and after an estimated approach to Sri Lanka, they began to descend to an altitude close to sea level, searching the horizon, when on the surface, a submarine suddenly appeared with a Japanese flag flying above it. And the pilot desperately pulled the lever to climb, and tracer bullets followed, and the shuddering engine, though showing reluctance, carried everyone out of harm's way again. An hour later, the plane finally landed safely, would have liked a simple stop in Sri Lanka immediately. But just took off, an engine blew up, indigestion engine finally or hang, good thing they just walked not far, turned around and flew back for repairs, while incidentally had a curry-flavored Christmas. The next 10 people stopped one after another Karachi, Bahrain, Khartoum. Landed on a river in Congo Leopoldville, in fact, this section of the flight over Africa is the most dangerous, because the Boeing 314 does not have landing gear, the reason why Pan AM gave it the name Clipper, because Clipper is the meaning of the 19th century fast sailing ship. If landed on the ground, only to crash on the spot. After all the twists and turns, in Leopoldville also found the Pan AM station people, the guys finally had a full meal, and they cried as they drank all the local cold beer. The best part was that the Boeing 314 finally drank no. 100 gasoline. Who knew that the next was the toughest test of the plane? Their next destination is 5,600 kilometers away from here in Natal, Brazil, and the maximum range of the California Clippers is 5,800 kilometers, a slight accident, the gang will have to feed the fish at sea. So Captain Ford had to load up a spare fuel tank and take off again. But the question of whether the inland river run was long enough was a big one after careful examination, they targeted a relatively straight section of the Congo River. Which is about 5 kilometers long and ends in a waterfall and winding canyon. After eating and drinking enough, Captain Ford pushed the engine to maximum power and the plane roared down the river. But Ford soon found that the hot air reduced lift and the overweight plane needed a longer takeoff distance. But the arrow was on the string and the waterfall at the end looked closer and closer at the last moment, the captain used the ground effect to finally pull the heavy plane up. Although only a few meters above the water, fortunately avoiding the cliff face. At this point, the aircraft began to fly along the narrow rock face, thrilling, in a turn near the canyon, Ford suddenly found that the controls failed, the original heavy fuel tanks to deform the wings. Jammed the cable to operate the ailerons. At the critical moment, Captain Ford was bold enough to step on the rudder and rely on yaw to barely avoid a crash. At this point the plane's engines had been roaring at maximum throttle for three minutes. While Boeing regulations state that the plane's maximum throttle time should not exceed 90 seconds. Fortunately, the Boeing 314 managed to fly out of the canyon and slowly climbed to high altitude. After 23 hours and 35 minutes in the air, setting a new record for the Boeing 314, the crew arrived in Porta Natal, Brazil. On January 6, 1942, at 5.54 a.m., the tower at New York's LaGuardia Terminal received a call from the California Clippers. But the tower told them they would have to hover over New York City for another hour before landing because the airport employees did not start work until 7.00 a.m. The lack of gasoline did not bring Ford to tears, the Japanese bullets did not repel him. And the fact that he could not land after circling the globe back home nearly broke the captain. After 209 hours in the air, more than 50,000 kilometers, and 18 landings in 12 countries on 5 continents, the California Clippers, the first commercial aircraft to travel around the world, finally landed safely. After being forced to accomplish this feat, the California Clippers was renamed the Pacific Clippers. But the world is changing too fast, there is always a wave before the wave after the shooting, with the land-based aircraft more and more reliable, the seaplane, the once dominant ocean going, eventually walked off the stage of history. The California Clippers is considered for this short but unforgettable era of seaplanes to make a wonderful curtain call. Today is a particularly long film, if you can see the end, is definitely my true love, in an effort to do a good job in each short film at the same time. More need the help of all the posy, thank you again to see the end, if you are interested in Pan Am's, Clippers, ship, comment section to tell me, maybe we can do a separate issue, so, we see you next time.